Hello, so today we're going to try to answer a question that was made about arrays in one of my previous videos. I already have the Spanish version of this video, so you can already check it. But, well, let's get to it. So, in this um, Christmas game video that I created, I had a question that had to do with arrays. So, Christina Riva was asking about uh, how to create an array and store some values. And after that, have the chance to ask the, the player about well one particular value and then how to search for that value, that name or that string inside the array and decide if it was found or not. So I'm going to show you. So first I'm going to start a new project and after that I'm going to well, it's going to be empty and I'm going to add the things that we're going to need. So the first thing that I'm going to use is a text box, not a text but a text box. And this one I'm going to use it to get the value that the user, the player is going to be taping. And well, I'm just going to uh, show it text box. Then I'm going to add an array, and you should have it here, array. And uh, this one we're going to modify it a little bit later uh, about the, the, the size. By default, it has 10 values here on the width on X, uh, but we're going to change that. I'm also going to use a small button and that is going to be here and this one I'm just going to do it uh, uh, well to just capture actions and I'm going to use a text that I'm going to make it really big and I'm just to make it clear here I will print the values of the array something like that. So the first thing that we need to have is to fill the array. So I'm going to use this text box and this button uh, to do exactly that. I'm going to uh, type things here and whenever I press this button I'm going to add something to the array and that's going to be printed here. Now if we go back to the array uh, you may notice that in the properties you have width, height, depth. So that means that you can create three-dimensional arrays in Construct 2. Uh, the beginning, you have like an array that has, uh, well, 10 uh, on the width, on the x that is going to be, the x-axis. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to uh, say that it's 0 to make certain that every single element that I'm going to insert here is going to, well, to take it there. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to make certain that I can uh, insert a new element. So I'm going to go to the events. I'm going to say add event and the entire thing is that whenever the button is pushed is pressed I'm going to take the value that we have in our text box and put it on the array so I'm going to say OK button unclicked and what I'm going to say is here array push that is here I'm going to say on this one and the value that I want to take is the value in the text box I'm going to say text box dot text now with this push what we're having here is that uh, we're putting the new value that we are typing hopefully in the text box at the end of the uh, array so we're going to have a well an array that is a basic line and since I made it zero on the width here it's going, this push is going to create a new element and put it at the end. Now, if I test it right now, we're not really going to see anything because I'm going to be able to type here, press the button, and nothing happens. So what I'm going to try to do now is to try to print the values that I already have uh, in the array in this text that we have here. And then, at least then, I will know that we're inserting the, the elements. To do that, I'm going to do a sub-event. To do a sub-event, to create a new sub-event, you have to click on the event that you want, then right click, say add, and then add blank sub event. You can see that here you can use the B letter to also do that, the hotkey, uh, and, but in this case I'm just going to click. So I'm just going to do it now with the B hotkick, hotkey, and you see that it creates the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is just to print the values that I already have in, in the array. 
print the values in the array, I'm going to move through all the values that we have there in the array. And to do that, I'm going to say uh, array. I'm going to pick the array. And then I'm going to pick the event for, for each element. So for each element, it's going to be uh, a loop that is going to go through all the elements that we have in the array. Now you have the options of the axis, uh, the, the axis that you are going to uh, go through, that you are going to traverse. Uh, if it was a three-dimensional array, you could go x, y, z, but obviously right now we just have an x, so we are going to pick x. And then what I'm going to do is to add to the text that we have here, to append the value that we have in, in the current position of the array. So I'm going to say our uh, text, append, append text, and what I have is array dot curve value. So that's obviously current value. So let's say that we have 10 elements. It's going to start with element 0, and it's going to say I'm going to add to the text the uh, current value that is whatever I put in the position 0 and then position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this loop is going to go from 0 to 9. That is the 10 elements that you are going to have. If I did it like that, all the elements are going to be added uh, here, but uh, there are going to be a couple of problems. That is, I already have a value here, and uh, also I'm not putting any, any spaces. So I'm going to test it like that, but you're going to see that it looks really bad. So here we have our text box. I'm going to add my first value. So I'm going to say, I don't know, cat. And then OK. And you see here that it added cat at the end. Well, let's say now dog. And you see cat dog. And then you see, I don't know, house. Cat dog house. But of course, we have this, this text here that I originally added to the array, that that's not really part of the, well, to the text, not to the array, I'm sorry. So that's not part of the array that shouldn't appear. And then every single time that I print the array, it's going to add everything. And it's just going to pen to that. And it's kind of like putting all the values there without any space. So I'm going to change that to make it look a little better. And what I'm going to do is first add a spaces. So I'm going to add a spaces. I'm going to say here, Ampersand quotes space quotes. That's really going to just add a, a space in between all the values of the array. And then this is just going to be a simple thing, uh, just to kind of like clear the entire the entire text. So I'm going to say text, set text, and basically empty. So every single time that I click on, on the button, it's going to completely delete the value that we had on the text, and then it's going to reprint it. It's not the most efficient way to do it, but since this is a small example, it should work. So let's see if that is actually working. So, inversion. So I'm going to say cat. It's OK. It deleted the first uh, the text that we had there. And now let's say that I am going to go for dog dog, then house, house, then whatever. So that means that we are uh, adding correctly to the end of the array, and on top of that, we are printing correctly the values that we have on the array. So the first part, it's already done. Now let's try to actually answer the question that, that uh, the real question had to do around, or we were trying to solve had to do with uh, finding this value or a value in the array that we're creating. So just to make it simple, I'm going to move this a little bit and I'm going to uh, make them clear where they're looking. And I'm going to create another text box and another button just to get a value that we're going to search. So I'm going to say text, I'm going to call it search box. And I'm going to do another button over here. And then I'm just going to call it find here. Well, this is button two, so uh, find button. Okay, it's a little easier. So we're going to use this first one just how we were doing before. And the second one, we're going to add a value. We're going to look for something that it's already here in the uh, 
in the array. So we're going to go back to our events and I'm going to do another on clicked, but this time on the find button. So I'm going to say on click. To be able to find elements in the array, I'm going to use the array function called index of. With index of, you can pass a value that in this case is going to be the, the text that we are going to read from, from this second text box, the search box. And that value is going to be searched in the array and we're going to have a return value. That return value is the index, that's why the, uh, the function is called index of. So it's going to be the index where uh, the function was able to find uh, in the array. So let's say that we have cat, house, and dog, and look for house, it's going to return one. That means that the house was able to, to be found on the uh, first position, or the position one of the array. What happens when it's not found? Then the value that is returned is minus one. And then we know that it was not able to find it in the, in the array. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a global, uh, global variable and it's going to be called result just to store the value of that search. Okay, so in the action that in, yeah, in the event that we were creating, the action that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the value of result and here I'm going to call that uh, that function. So I'm going to say array dot find uh, index of, I'm sorry, index of, that's what I was thinking. And then I have to send uh, between parentheses the value that I'm looking for. In this case, the value that I'm looking for is the text that is inside search box. So I'm going to say search box dot text. I'm going to close this. And then it's going to uh, basically show me if, if, well, it's going to store here in result the index that we had for this text. Now, since we already have in the result uh, variable, uh, what, whatever we want to really like know that is the index, uh, I'm going to add two sub events that have to do like, hey, um, did you find it? Did you not find it? So I'm going to say, I'm going to click on the event, press B to create a blank sub event. And then I'm going to ask the simplest case, hey, were you able to not find it? minus one because that's the only value that I know for sure. So I'm going to say I'm going to compare the variable that is result if it's equals to minus one. So in this case it's not compare I did not find it so oh, no, I'm sorry. Quote I'm going to say I was not able to find the volume. Now, what happens on else, what happens on, uh, it's not minus one, that means that it was able to find the value. So I'm going to add here, add else. So if it was not minus one, it's something else, and then in that case, it's like, I was able to find the value. So I already have the two cases. So uh, why did I leave the action empty? It's because I still don't have anything to put there to say, like show to the user, show to the player, if I found the value or not. So what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to add two texts, and then uh, I'm going to clone this one. This one I'm going to say uh, found, and this one I'm going to say not found quite obvious, right? And even to make it super clear, I'm going to make it in red and this one is going to be in green. So I found it or I was not able to find it. So uh, I'm going to uh, make both of them invisible at the beginning. Invisible. Uh, and then what I'm going to do here on the events is to decide which one I'm going to make visible. So if I was not able to find it, of course, what I, uh, oh, I'm going to rename them just to make certain. So not found. And this one I'm just going to say it found. No, it's quite clear which one I'm talking about uh, on the events at least. So if I was not able to find it, I have to make not found visible. So where is not found? And then visibility. Is it visible? Visible. 
And now if I was able to find it, I'm going to say found visible. Visible. So that's it. So now let's try it. Okay. So I'm going to first start three values. One, two, three. And then I'm going to look for different values. So I'm going to start with one that I know that is there. Found. And then I'm going to uh, go for one that I know that is not there, not found. So what happened here? Also, uh, we have an error that uh, the third thing is like showing both values. And it's because as soon as I make both visible, I'm not going to, I'm not making them invisible. So let's change that. So I'm going to copy this one here. And I'm going to copy this one here. So that way I can make them invisible too. And then it should work. Okay, so let's try it again. So one, two, three. So let's find one, two, found. And now let's go for something that is not there. Six, not found. Then three, found. And then uh, seven, not found. So it's working. So the other thing that we can do is that whenever we say found, we can also say that uh, which one is the position that we found it because we have that information. So here I could say found, set text to found, that is what we already had, and then say position, post, and I'm going to put here space, ampersand, and then we have that value in the result. So let's do it. Again, let's just start one, two, three, well, four, let me get it there. Then I'm going to say four, find position two, because that means that is, is position zero, one, two. Now let's go for two, one, let's add more values, three, five, seven, house, and then I'm going to look for uh, seven, five, and let's look for house, six, and let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, so that's correct. Uh, so in this video, you end up checking how to insert elements on an array, and then also how to look for them in the array. Uh, this may not be the best way, but it kind of illustrates a lot what we had to do. So, well, all in all, it was much more than 10 minutes. It was around 19 or something like that. Uh, but I think it was a good example of the things that you can do with Construct 2. And, well, I'm really happy with the result. Please let me know your comments and any suggestions or questions are quite welcome.